Hello, everyone. This is Coca Sexton with Inside View. Uh, thank you for joining today's webinar with Social Selling University called The Big Problem with Social Selling. As always, we uh, like to have the conversations going on Twitter, so feel free to uh, use the hashtag social talk. Uh, during the webinar, if you have questions, uh, want something answered, you got some input, uh, use that hashtag. That's what's going to be monitored. And be sure to sign up for Social Selling University. Uh, most of the people that are in attendance here um, are already members, but we have lots of new ones um, as well. So feel free to join Social Selling University, um, get you know updated on blog posts, other webinars, um, and other amazing things that uh, come out of uh, that product. We've got quite a webinar for you today. This is going to be a little bit different than most of the webinars we do, which is a lot of uh, thought leadership and some other things. This is going to be really more of a conversation um, in, with uh, our guest speaker today. You know, the social rev selling revolution is here. And you know, this is a slide that we used on our last webinar and it just kind of stuck with me because it, it's really coming to a head, this whole idea of social selling. <clears throat> Whereas a couple years ago, people were trying to figure out what social selling was, but I think now it's at a level where most people understand what it is, and more and more companies are trying to get it involved into their process, into their sales process. So today we've got a great webinar scheduled for you. We have Jill Rowley, the LO Queen. Uh, she's the Director of Key Accounts over at Eloqua. Jill, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, hi, Coca. Thanks for having me today. Hey, we're, we're happy to have you. And myself, Coca Sexton, I'm the Director of Social Strategy here at Inside View. So before we get started, Jill, let's talk about the elephant in the room. So some really big news came out today about uh, your company. Well, can you tell us about that? So I'm uh, excited. I am uh, proudly wearing my Ella Queen crown today. Um, I've been with the company this year. I celebrated my 10-year anniversary, and I've been in direct sales for all 10 of those years. Um, and today there was an announcement that you can read on our website about Oracle um, acquiring us, and uh, there's a bunch of details available on our on our website. I definitely encourage everyone to to get the uh, the real scoop from from the website. So, what's the difference between a merger and an acquisition, or is it basically the same thing? I'm I'm kind of ignorant to this stuff. Um. So let me pick up pull up Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, I, I don't want to be wrong in terms of defining a merger or an acquisition. Uh, we are, we are being, being used, I thought being used kind of uh, in, in different formats through different stories that we saw about this morning that came out when the news broke. Yeah, so, so according to the press release, this is an acquisition. So um, Oracle is acquiring Eloqua. Got it. Okay. So, and the reports are uh, you know, approximately $871 million. That's, uh, that's a nice chunk of change. Yeah, it's, um, you know, I think Oracle was one of the, 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 the they, they, if you look at their financials, they're a $7 billion software company. I think they are the third largest software company in the world. Um, and uh, they, they see tremendous potential in software as a service cloud and specifically in, in marketing. And um, I think everyone knows that they were, were light on their, on their marketing functionality and acquiring the, the market leader in the marketing automation space. It, they, Oracle acquires the, the best. And, and so I think the acquisition, um, it's, it's, a, it's a, an endorsement for uh, the marketing automation space and also for Eloqua specifically being the market leader in the space. It's, it's a very exciting time. 
it's exciting for our customers. Um, Very exciting. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you look at their 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 annual report and you see the amount of money that Oracle spends on R and D, so it just gives us a tremendous amount of horsepower behind um, further innovating on on our platform. And really, you know, if if you look at Scott Brinker, he he's just one of my favorite guys, um, chief marketing technologist blog, and you and you look at his his chart that he's put together on the marketing technology landscape. I shared it on my, my Facebook page today. Um, I, I continue to go back to that, that, that slide and it's, it's dizzying Coca. It's, it, it makes me want to like, like take a pill sometimes because <laughs> <laughs> there's just so well, I mean, much. Isn't it funny? I mean, I, and I saw this on Twitter. I mean, you, you look at the industry and we're both in the B2B space. And we see an acquisition like this. And I mean, when I got, when I saw this come across Twitter this morning, I, I, my jaw literally hit the ground because one, we were having this webinar today, and I was like, I wonder if she's going to not be able to be on the webinar. And two, oh my gosh, Oracle just bought Eloqua. You know, isn't it strange? Or you know, and I saw this on Twitter. You know, somebody even brought it up. You know, isn't it weird how a, a photo, a, you know, a filter, a photo filtering application like Instagram can get you know four billion, but something like you know Eloqua. Is is coming in at you know eight hundred seventy one million. It 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 is. And, you know, if you look at B two B versus B two C, you you see you see different quote valuations, right? So, I think Instagram was what thirteen employees, and yeah, I don't know I don't know what in terms of revenue, but certainly nowhere near the size of of so Eloqua. Instagram was making any revenue. Exactly, and so I think that's the that's still the phenomenon in B two B versus B two C, and and the hype and the and the you know Instagram has the ability to reach um, hundreds of millions of people, whereas marketing automation, albeit um, very strategic, in particular in B two B. Um, the 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 reach of 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 the of the product is nowhere near that of a of a hot sexy. I think marketing automation is extremely sexy. Oh, I think it's sexy, and you know, everyone always I, I, when I'm when you, when I'm giving a, an overview of what Eloqua is, and I start with the foundation. The foundation, one of the four pillars of, of what we do is data. And I always say, you know, data is the least sexy aspect of B2B marketing. But the reality is it what you can get out of data is really sexy. The insights and the analytics and, and the learnings that you can get from data is really sexy. The process of managing the data housing the data, combining the data. If I go back to Scott Brinker's dizzying slide, and I wish we, we had it here to share. I don't know if you can pull it up quickly, Coca. Um, if you think about all those different tools and you think about all those different channels, there's data in every single one of them. And how yeah. do you get that 360 degree view of the customer? If you've got data, structured and unstructured data, all over I just the inside you for that. Now that that I'm, I, I'd like to learn more about that. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll get to that in a second. So, you know, how, how did you find out about the acquisition? Did, were you driving into work? Uh, well, I mean, if, did you go to the office today? Did you did somebody like ping you on Twitter, or did you find out? Did you did you find out about this like you know a couple days ago and just were told to be quiet? Oh no, 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 no! They knew not to let Joe Rowley find out. <laughs> well, I got a very smart marketing team and a very smart executive team. There was there was no way they were letting it leak to Joe Rowley. Um, and and I'm speaking about myself in the third person. I I don't mean to do that, but um, it's okay. I do it all the time too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I my I work from my home office, and um, my home office is actually in in our master suite. Um, and I don't silence my. I have my phone on all the time, and so I got a call um, on my office line at about 5:15 a.m. this morning, and I didn't I didn't take it 
Um, but I was already up, and, and, I, and the next, really the next email in my inbox was regarding the acquisition. So then I knew the call was about the acquisition, email was about the acquisition. And then, of course, the, the social channel started to light up. Um, I actually, my first, my first reaction to the news was um, um, our customers, and 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 knowing at that. Point, girl, at what point did you think, oh my gosh, I just hit, I just had a payday? Not until probably about an hour and a half after the news, when my brother-in-law, who is our financial advisor, money manager, emailed me what it meant, and and it literally wasn't until that that I that I made, and call me stupid, call me naive, call me whatever, but I didn't make that connection to, oh, this means that my stock <laughs> is... Equals, what, a, a million dollars? Over a million dollars. Oh my it didn't, gosh! I, 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 I think you can I, move your office out of your master suite now. <laughs> Maybe You're we can build an office on your house. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But in <laughs> like in, in in California, you know, a million dollars isn't a lot of money. I, I don't know. I, I'd be happy with it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, why don't we talk about social selling? That's what we're here to Absolutely. talk about. Let's let's get this thing going. So let's let's get. I want to hear it from you. You know, there's a lot of. I mean, I have my own opinion on what social selling is, but I want to hear it from Jill Rowley. How? What do you think social selling is? What does it mean to you? It is very much like traditional selling, and I tell people this all the time that the social aspect of selling it, it it's really what me it means is it's leveraging new channels and it's leveraging new channels to identify connect and engage with your your buyers um not only your buyers but your buyers um sphere of influence your your buyers customers your buyers employees your buyers partners your buyers vendors and what social all social has done is made it much easier to connect with your current buyers and your your future buyers. That's so how did you what get it, started with that? So I I've always been um, curious about technology and um, for example, when I was a rep at Salesforce.com in 2000 and I had never carried a bag and it was funny because in one of my interviews with them they one of the objections was I, I didn't have any sales experience and and I said well you knew that when you brought me in to this interview so what do I need to show you what skills do I need to show you that I have that you'll know that I could be successful carrying a bag and so you know at Salesforce I was quick to adopt um, this new tool, it was a customer of mine, they had about 10 employees, and they had this tool to be able to send trackable emails. And to send emails, like go take the article reprints from the wall that I would go and I would collect and put together in a mail package and throw a hat or a t-shirt in there to one person. I had this, this great content that then I could put into an email format and send to lots of people and track opens, forwards, and click-throughs on those emails. And, and that's oh, go back. So one of the things you used to do as a salesperson was collect news on your prospects and kind of send it along to, like, through regular mail, with, along with a T-shirt? So, so I, what I would do, the, the news that I would, I would share with them would be articles about Salesforce.com. Got it. So it was really news about us and why they should – use Salesforce, why they should be, and back then it wasn't called Cloud or SaaS, COCA, it was called ASP, um, and it was a whole debate of client server versus ASP, 
And so the buyer, I had to educate the buyer on yeah. what the what you know what the what the different model of Salesforce was, and and why Salesforce. And so when we would get endorsements in Forbes magazine or the Wall Street Journal, those were articles that were printed articles. And the way that we would share that information back then, 12 years ago, was really via print and mail. And it was and then it you was just kind of translated that into social media or through I guess through the email that you would track. I, I translated it to email and said, this is a channel that I could use to communicate with lots more people on a much more frequent basis and be able to track who was viewing my messages. And it would help me then determine who I would call, what I would, you know, when I would call them because I had immediate um, insight into who was actually responding to my message. And so the question started Salesforce. with social com, selling and how did I get into it? it it's, it's an evolution. It's just all it is is using the new channels that exist to, again, find, in, discover, connect, engage with buyers. Social is just the, the, the channel du jour I don't think social is going to go away. I think we're going to see a lot more channels even within social. But for me, it wasn't like one day I woke up and said, oh, i got to do this social selling thing. It was there's a new technology, there are new channels, there are new ways to discover and connect and engage with my buyers. So that was my first foray into social, was just using it as a channel to – and then it became, with a shift in marketing from outbound to inbound, inbound was being... Was there ever that aha moment where you realized, oh, my gosh, this is actually a viable channel to start doing stuff with within the social, social networks? That's a great question. Was there ever an aha moment? You know, I... Because at some I, point, I mean, there's tools that come out all the time, and salespeople kind of play around things, and they lose interest and they move on, you know, it, when I was in sales, you know, there was that aha moment. And it was kind of along the same lines that you were doing with email. I started finding the engagement. Um, and that was my aha moment. You know, was it something similar for you? Or, you know, was there some other catalyst that said, this is for you, this is why I want to continue doing this? I, I think that there were a number of significant um, successes that, um, and, and I was just uh, direct messaging with Jonathan for the CMO of SAP. So I'll tell that story of, um, I got an email, I was in Utah, and I was meeting with a potential customer. And it was late at night, and I was in my hotel room, and I got an email notification from Eloqua letting me know that this guy, Jonathan Becker, was on the Eloqua website. And I said, in, in the title, it was EVP of, of And so I said, oh, my gosh, the EVP of marketing at SAP is on Eloqua's website. So I, I go and I look at it, and I see that he had actually clicked through an email, why CMOs should carry a quota. But what I did is I, I went immediately to LinkedIn, and I said, who is this Jonathan Becker guy? And what I saw on LinkedIn is that Jonathan went to the University of Virginia. And I went to the Ah, University. the connection. The connection, a common connection. And so when I forwarded that email alert from Eloqua telling me that Jonathan had clicked through the email why CMO should carry a quota, and I, and I said to Jonathan, wahoo wah, I too am a UVA alumni. I was then able to get literally within 30 minutes an email back from Jonathan Becker. The it's CMO of a good story. Her company. So, so those, that's just one of I could tell you story after story. I could tell you stories from today, Coca, and that's what makes me continue to do social. Probably another aha moment, Coca, was when um, Brent Adamson and Matt Dixon, the co-authors of the Challenger Sale. Uh, yes. Yeah. I hadn't read their book, and they they interviewed me, and 
they we went through this long interview about how I do what I do, why I do it, when I do it, all that. And they were they they kept saying how amazed they were, and I I, I kept feeling like why this is so this seems so common sense, this seems so natural. This seems why is this so unique? And then they asked me a question, Jill. What what percentage of your pipeline is sourced from your social selling? And it was then that I said to them. Matt, the better question is what percentage of Eloqua's pipeline yeah. is sourced through my social selling efforts? And through all of our, you know, Eloqua, we have a lot of brand ambassadors. We, we believe in social selling. We teach our, not just our sales organization, but our employees about being brand advocates, about doing social. I mean, social selling kind of sounds a little like, because selling isn't isn't um, Coca, you know, it, it isn't necessarily the the most highly regarded profession. Yeah. Um, I'd like to change that. One of the things. Well, I think I'd you're like doing a good job. Yeah, and that kind of goes into you know the next the next question, which is around personal branding, and yeah. the fact that you've built this brand. I mean, you work for Eloqua. You're you're the Eloqueen, but you know mm -hmm. you're really building a brand around Jill Rowley. Mm -hmm. and you've got 4,000 followers on Twitter. Your clout score is higher than, I'd say, 80% of the salespeople I come across. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, you, you've spent a lot of time on your personal brand, and I, I think it, it was as a byproduct of just kind of doing what you do. Or did you focus on it? it? I wish I could say everything was designed because by design because that would then mean that I was, you know, um, Highly, highly intelligent or or strategic. I think I think a lot of it is is just what feels natural to me because I am you know open to technology and open to change. Um, and and one of the things I've I've always wanted to do is is to to be connected to more people. Um, it it at some point in my career with Eloqua. Um, it, my, my, my focus of being number one and beating everybody else on the sales team um, shifted from being, being the best customer advocate I could be and being, being number one to the organization. And being number one to the organization, you know, being the number one sales rep, I don't think – Although you get a lot of glory and you get a big commission check, it it isn't it isn't personally personally rewarding after a period of time. And so social it started with our internal use of chatter, which gave me a channel to show the rest of Eloqua that I didn't just care about me, Jill Rowley, being the number one sales rep, that I really cared about our customers. And really, like, wanted to be able to have a platform to celebrate the great stuff that our customers are doing and, and be able to. Yeah, go ahead. Well, no, and I think that brings up a really good point. I mean, and this quote has come up, you know, in paraphrase format in many ways when, you know, we're doing, when we were kind of doing the research on this webinar. And one of the things, it's almost a mantra for you where you say, I'm not here to sell you anything. You know, and I think you carry that to a different level that most salespeople, it's beyond, you know, their mentality, where you're actually using your social channels not to sell stuff. And it sounds like that's a very conscious decision that you're making throughout a lot of the process. Yeah, I, I, I help people buy. And um, I really don't, I don't think of it as, as selling. I, I think of it as how can I help people – Buy, but buy, buy better, buy smarter, buy, buy what they need when they need it and when they're ready to use it. And, and you know, I've been talking about the skills gap in marketing for years. I've been talking about it. the first one of the the first reports I read. I, I even revisited it this morning because, uh, as you can imagine, lots of people are congratulating and 
and and and and so I got an email from Henry Bruce, um, and he was at the Winterberry Group, and one of the first reports I read is that that I just started to then share within the whole entire Eloqua company was about the skills gap, and if there's a skills gap in marketing of folks who know how to do modern marketing, know how to use data, know how to use digital, know how to use the web, know how to do and metrics, it's not being translated do... into salespeople. Yeah, it 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 was it was like if there's a skills gap, we got to fill it because yeah. we can't sell our technology to people who don't know how to use it. And knowing how to use it isn't just taking product training and learning what this does versus that button does. Knowing how to use it is is really having the right people on your team with the right skills who understand the concept. What is the concept of lead nurturing? When would you nurture? How would you nurture? Um, what is a buying cycle? How do I align my content to the buying persona of the at the buying process? And all these things that the technology that I quote sell, Coca, is is it, it, it doesn't you don't turn it on and it magically produces highly qualified opportunities for your sales team. Yeah. So I feel like I don't sell, I help people buy, and I help them get ready for the for the journey because if they buy before they're ready, then they're going to a trip. It's and true. And we're SaaS, and so if we if we bring on bad customers, meaning customers who aren't ready to buy, and ready to to really invest the resources, then we end up creating attrition, and that's bad for our business, and it's bad for our customers. Yeah, no, we, we face the same things here. I think any SaaS company does. Uh, so the next thing I wanted to talk about was, you know, it, you're a celebrity, and many, and many, I mean, obviously not in, on the Simon Cowell status or, you know, the quote-unquote celebrity, but when it comes to personal branding and what it means to social selling and, you know, you salespeople leveraging social media, you're kind of seen as a celebrity. I mean, you, you're talking at these CED events, you're, you're being interviewed by numerous people, you know. When did, when did that come about? Is that a fairly recent thing? Has social selling has been kind of the, the hot button? Or, you know, is it going much further back, you know, a year or two? How long did it take for you to get to this level? It, the, the, the widespread recognition has been in 2012. And so the year that it kind of broke out for you. That was, this was my breakout year for, you know, I've always been asked to do, um, presentations to sales teams of my customers on um, how the buying process has changed, digital body language, um, Eloqua sales enablement tools, you know, why use our engage tool that helps you send emails from an iPad and track them. So I've always, I've been asked to do that years and years that I've been at Eloqua to, to present to sales organizations um, about, you know, technology and, and the way the buying process has changed and, and all those things. But it was really this year that the social selling category stuck. And, it, you know, it built upon itself one interview here, one podcast here, uh, one sales kickoff there, and and then um, it, it really just started to build upon itself throughout this past uh, probably I would say eight months. All right, yeah, and that kind of brings us to you know the point of having this conversation, which was you know we we I think we talked about it in the pre-show, but you know the the tweets. The tweet that got my attention that really wanted me to have this webinar, which was, you know, something that came out from you. And initially I was thinking, is, uh, is this like, you know, one of those you know, social media problems out there? Um, but, you know, you started becoming vocal. And I think you, you've been vocal in some ways. But this is the first one that actually caught my attention, probably because you used the hashtag fail in it. But, you know, yeah. you reach 
tens of thousands of people easily. I mean, you, you've got to have you got 4,000 followers on Twitter, and they're very targeted followers. I'm going to assume you've got, you know, what, another 1,500 to 2,000 people following, you know, connected with you on LinkedIn. 4,400 right? 4, connections on LinkedIn. 4,400 connections 4, 4, on LinkedIn. I'm going to be exact number, but, yeah, 4,400. you connect with everybody on LinkedIn? Not everybody, because there are, I think they say, oh, they'd be terrible, if I don't get the number correct, uh, 150 million members on LinkedIn, I think. Yeah, Maybe 150 it's million people are going to be interested in Jill. But, I mean, that, that's, a, it's four, that's, a, that's 4,000 people. That's a lot of connections. 4,410 connections. That's correct. 62 that's, people have used my profile today. That's right, yes. And I know that because we use Sales Navigator. So this is the tweet that kind of got my attention, and then, you know, I responded back to you, but this is what the big problem is, and, you know, it could lead to a problem, and this is what really got my attention, because this, this was where the problem was identified, and that it could lead to problems, and not just with Eloqua, I think with many different companies, if companies don't learn how to fix it, and, I, you know, I want to kind of go through that journey on this phone call of, you know, how, how do companies solve for this problem? Yeah. You know, I, so, you know, what I think, you know, as you kind of pointed out, was that, you know, the pipeline being generated by social selling professionals, people who know how to leverage these social networks, it far outweighs an individual's contributions or whatever territory they're working in. You know, is, is that right? Absolutely. I, 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 um, I think that, that, we don't, we don't, not everyone and, and not the majority of folks, um, and, and it's, not, it's not realistic. I, I, and I talk, there's another saying I use, and it's give to give versus give to get. So, um, you know, I, I do believe that you should give of yourself your time, your, your talents, your energy to give because pay it forward, um, and, and, you, and you have gifts, and you should, you should share those gifts with others. Um, but you know, a lot of, a lot of sales, um, one of my, one of my, uh, advisors said to me, I'm paying for my father's sins, uh, by being a sales professional in that, uh, there's just a very negative perception, uh, in general of sales professionals that they're, they're in it to win it. They're in it to win it at any cost. They're in it for the almighty dollar. Um, they'll snake an account from you if you don't watch it. Like, I just think there's, there's a lot of negative perception about sales professionals, and that's, that's Is that that's why you don't really promote the fact that you're, you know, I mean, you have it in that LinkedIn profile that you, you manage these key accounts, but is that really, you know, kind of how the Ella Queen and how you kind of, is that how you distance yourself from being the salesperson, so to speak? I, I the Ella Queen thing is more around being cute and, um, and, 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 and picking something that would hopefully represent my commitment to my customers and my, my future customers. So I, when I meet someone, Coco, when I, when, I don't like to use the word prospect. It just, the old sounds dirty, like, ooh, I got to go call myself some prospects today. Like, prospect <laughs> just feels dirty, right? I'm, I'm going to this event because it's I'm going to go meet some prospects. So I, I've actually always, you know, I think of these people not as prospects, but I think of them as future advocates. So I think of them as, as I want to I turn a non-customer into a – Megan Eisenberg at DocuSign, who has had incredible success at four different companies, leveraging the power of our people, our technology, um, our community. When I when I meet a a future buyer, potential buyer, I want I want them to aspire to Maureen McCormick at Trend Micro. I want them to get to her greatness, to her to her success level. You know, when I first started working with Maureen, I knew I had a winner. I knew she would be Bella Queen. 
And so I, I, I think in terms of, you know, that, that I, I want to take what I believe in COCA and, and I want it to benefit a lot more than just 80 accounts that are the companies that are left over in the Bay Area that we happen to haven't, you know, sold to yet, that haven't bought from us yet. And, and I just, I, I got, I've gotten to this point where at Eloqua, I, I don't feel like I'm in a strategic role anymore. And I've, I've outgrown the role that I'm in. And, um, and, and so and I... And you probably felt this way for a while, though, right? This isn't, this isn't a brand new thing, or is it? I, I, I think for, for quite a while, I've been really trying to stay true to my, my give to give core value system. I, I, I've been really trying to stay true to that, yet I think what I've realized is I can still have a give to give core value system, but I need to be doing it in a role that takes, that, that leverages my talents, that leverages my passion, that leverages the, the breadth and the depth of my network that I've built at Eloqua over the past 10 years, that leverages the, the, the community of folks who trust um, what, I, what I have to, to say. And, and it's, what I know is I will not be at Eloqua in 2013 in the role of managing 80 accounts. And, and the, the, the question Do you becomes, know this or is this what you're hoping? Oh, I know it because if that's the role they keep me in, it's I won't be here. So, I I will not be in that role managing 80 accounts. We are working together at Eloqua on creating what could what could ultimately be um, a groundbreaking, bleeding edge. Um, a little bit, you know, with the Oracle acquisition, it makes me say, Ah, shit, we were so close. Um, what does this mean? But, but literally, we have been crafting, and I've been doing it with the advice and input and counsel and coaching of some of the smartest experts in sales and marketing. So I, I my, as you know, my network is big, and, and the quality of it is very strong, and I've been working with some of the brightest minds in sales and marketing on what a modern um, uh sales, a marketing professional, what does that role look like within the organization? If you, if you think about corporate executive board and the stat that they quote that 57% of the buying process is done before the buyer engages with sales, there's yeah, a whole that lot. Yeah, all over the place. I've seen stats as high as 70% by some places. I mean, it's, it's, it's a reality. It's not just even a stat. It's just, it, that's just life now. That is life. And so 57% of that buying process is complete before engaging with sales. So we're leaving it up to our marketing and our social um, presence to help the buyer in their learning party about, you know, the problem that can be solved. Whereas I think if you, if you could have sales professionals, professional being the key word, professionals move further back down that arrow, if, if, they, if they could take the approach of you know, really being where their buyers are, um, being, being in the channels that their buyers are in and, and engaging in a, in a professional, um, insightful way, um, we're, we're going to see a shift, Oka. And, and at Eloqua, we were working on a, a new role within the organization that would allow someone with... Basically, the, mini, like mini jilts running around. Like, you know, just clone yourself. Well, it, yeah. Why, why wouldn't you want your entire organization to be brand ambassadors? Mm -hmm. I, I agree. I mean, this is one of the big things that uh, I'm a part of, you know, within Social Selling University is, you know, again, you know, 
me being an early adopter into this also, and I, I'm surprised that it took so many years for our paths to cross because we're walking in parallel in many ways. Uh, that you know, I, I agree. I think that the salesperson of the future is someone that can do both roles, that can wear that hat of sales and marketing. Uh, but you know, and that raises a really good question, which is, you know, how do say, how should sales managers, you know, how 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 should they be viewing reps that use social selling? Because even in my talking with uh, you know my public speaking events where I'm either talking to an, at an event or if I go to a um, customer of ours where I'm doing some training for one of their sales teams or you know more their, their global teams, that most sales managers aren't. They may think, hey, yeah, I want them to be on these social networks, but most managers don't feel like it's it's necessary, right? I mean, are you seeing more – I'm seeing that shift happen where it's becoming more obvious now, but you've got to see this even within your own customer base and people that you come across where managers don't view social selling as a viable ROI um, as they should. Yeah, they, they don't get it, and they need to read more articles. Uh, Harvard Business Review, Forbes, um, Salesforce.com has some great content on social transformation, social selling university. Um, uh, it, 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 social is not going away. It, you know, the Internet is not going away. Uh, really what social is, it's just leveraging the Internet and the power of the Internet. So social – Buyers don't want to be sold to, and, you know, I think managers are afraid of their reps doing social because managers don't know how to do social. Nobody, you know, really knows how to tame this beast or, or work well, with them. I think that's one of the biggest things that I come across is that sales managers don't know how to measure it. And, you know, we've got, you know, from Social Selling University and here at Inside View, we, we have it pretty locked on on how, what the metrics are for it, but I think that most companies are still trying to figure out how they're going to measure the sales process outside of just revenue. Like that's, that's the key indicators. Are they generating revenue and not looking further down the cycle to you know, say, what are these guys doing that can actually be creating the pipeline of tomorrow versus working the pipeline right now? That, that is exactly right. And, and you know why? Another reason why – it requires massive transformation within an organization to move to a social um, uh, model. Um, and, and CSC, a $15 billion company, I think, with 95,000 employees, I did a Google Hangout with them a couple weeks ago and they did this hangout for their entire company, and they, they're a, an old school company transforming into new school ways, embracing um, uh, social and new ways of customer engagement. Um, and, and, you know, I think, I think that the, 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 the resistance is, yes, measuring it, but it's also – when you move to this model, then you now have to rethink territories. You and have that actually to brings up a great question. You know, and, you know, before we go on to the next topic, is is this whole idea of territories and social proximity as it's kind of being coined? Yep. And and um, Mike Darrison, the GM of LinkedIn Sales Solutions, uh, his daughter and my daughter in second grade class together and. He was picking her up from my my daughter's my youngest daughter. She turned eight. Her name's Lily Kate. Uh, Mike was picking up his daughter from Lily Kate's birthday party, and we had a you know a fascinating conversation around um, social. And they have done a think about the data that those guys have. Holy holy mackerel! Like. The data that LinkedIn has is astounding. It's the, it is the absolute best B2B database in the world by far. And they have done a, in their sales solutions group, they've, they're, they're kind of like a startup within a, a very large organization that's performing extremely well. Um, 
they have they have experimented with social proximity as the territory model, and who better to do it, right? LinkedIn, um, and they saw a three x return, a three x lift on conversion rates by leveraging social proximity. Here's so the thing: they're, they're actually selling that product. They're not selling the product. They haven't even built the product. That's okay. what they like. They haven't built the product. They internally, you know, as you can, they, they're going to test any product that they put out to market. So, and they want to prove prove it out that it that it is something that that you know it should be productized. They want to prove it out internally first. And so, maybe I'm sharing information that I shouldn't be sharing. Um, but um, that that wouldn't be a surprise to anybody. <laughs> Well, you know, because I look at, you know, other applications out there, and, you know, again, I'm, I'm a huge fan of LinkedIn as a social network. I think there's a lot of use in it that salespeople don't leverage enough of. I, when I think of it as a sales tool, it, I think of it more of a sales network. Um, but, you know, the tool base of it is still looking up profiles and kind of matching them against your connections. Um, so it, it'll be interesting to see what they can actually build into a product that's, that's sellable. Yeah, it, it, you know, I personally, I use it not just for finding people and making connections. I use it to establish my, um, my personal brand, but also to share relevant content with my buyers. So I think of LinkedIn as a channel. Um, I don't have to have my own blog. I can just go curate content. So I read everything my buyers read. I read B2B online. I read... Forbes, I read um, uh, uh, marketing, um, or Chief Content Officer magazine. Um, so I read everything my buyers read, and I very easily share that content across my social channels. So I share it um, on LinkedIn. I share it on Facebook. I share it on Twitter. And so I'm using those channels as a way to um, – Get further down that 57%, right? I don't want to, I want people to come to Eloqua um, and to me personally before they're ready to have that buy conversation. I want them to know that, that I'm their information concierge and that they can, they want to be part of my network. They want to follow me on Twitter. They want to link with me on LinkedIn because I'm going to, to share information that's of value to them. Very does, that, so, does that make you know, sense in terms of my evolution of, of using LinkedIn as a, not just a way to get more connections, but it's, it's no, a way I mean, to... And that's, and that's what I think one of the missing pieces is, is salespeople need to think about, and this is what I say during SSU trainings, uh, social Science university trainings, is quit thinking of your LinkedIn profile as just your online resume. I mean, you have to think of it as a network and start using it the same Absolutely. way that you do Facebook. You know, I, I you have know, a slide it, that I, I was, a lot that says in, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn is Facebook with a tie, and you need to think of it that way. You're right. You, you're, 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 and, and Coco, are you using, what channels are you using more for social? What's the, are there other channels beyond the, the obvious, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, that, that you well, think are, are good I'm, for social? I'm, what about Google Plus? You know, Google Plus is a rough one. Um, it's not highly adopted. I can see some of the use in some of their products, like the Google Hangouts. Um, I've been a part of a couple of them. I've never actually run one. Um, Google Hangouts or, you know, Google Plus is really niche. I think it's on the fringe, and it, they could probably do some interesting stuff with it. But, you know, I, I'm kind of a Twitter whore, so I spend a lot of time on Twitter. Um, yeah. LinkedIn is, you know, where I go and kind of have more of the professional conversations, but I, I'm usually on Twitter more often than anything. In fact, Many people know that if they want to get a hold of me, sending me an email is, is probably never going to happen because I get so much. Uh, you know, getting me on the phone because I'm in me meetings more often, you know, throughout the day now more so than ever. You know, if somebody wants to get a hold of me, if they don't have my text message and they can't get my attention on Twitter, you know, it's probably, it's probably good to say that they, they have nothing really interesting to say to me. Well, were you tweeting at the birth of your absolutely beautiful baby? Thank you. And yes, I was actually live tweeting during the birth. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know that. I follow you on Twitter, and I'm like, this dude is tweeting from the from the delivery room. 
Yeah. <laughs> I had to do something. I mean, I, 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 I had nothing else to do. <laughs> oh, yeah. and, and more support too- and for tweeting. You know, Coca. I think. I mean, I had my my BlackBerry um, when they, when they when we see pictures of the delivery room with Lily Kate, December ninth, two thousand four. I had my my big it big honking BlackBerry um, by the bed and my my big Baja Fresh water bottle that I carried everywhere. Um, you know, connected always on. Um, and I think um, Coca sharing some personal um, aspects of yourself on your business channels is is key as well. And so I try to remember, you know, more so on Facebook because I I'm going to get unfriended by my family if I stop just only sharing stuff about marketing. Work. Um and so <laughs> selling. Um so I make sure I post the pictures of of us, you know, decorating holiday cookies of of us, you know, putting the turkey in the oven. And and every once in a while I'll tweet um, I'll tweet one of those uh, pictures because um, I think it's important that people know know who you are as a as a as a person as a mom of a wife of a friend not just you as a as a business person. Well, I think that's where the the the, the brand really comes from, right? I mean, you have to be authentic. I mean, it, I made the decision consciously many years ago that I wasn't going to separate my professional and my business life when it came to social media. It, it, it just didn't, it, it didn't really even cross my mind until somebody asked me the question. And, you know, that's when I made the decision that, no, I would never have two different channels for my life. I'm Coca, and I'm just going to be who I am. People are going to follow me and connect with me in these networks because they want to hear about my professional life as well as, you know, inklings of my personal life, the ones that I actually share online. I agree. I would never have a separate account for me in business and me in personal. But I I will share a story with you of the day I said, I don't want to be branded Jilliqua. I still love the Ella Queen and I'm sticking with it, but the day that I said, uh, it was it was a Friday, and my husband and I had had a pretty big fight the night before on Thursday. And I I had most of the world. The guy is gold. I I love. He's my rock. He's my biggest supporter. He's an amazing father. I mean, I I really do have an amazing husband. But he effed up. Um, that Thursday night, he effed up pretty badly. He made me really mad, and you don't want to make Joe Rally mad. And so I was having a rough day that Friday, and I was emotional. I'm I'm a woman, and and I'm not. I don't try to hide my emotions. I try to really um, um, leverage them, and 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 really encourage other people, especially men, to to express their emotions and show their vulnerability. So, anyways, I was having a shit day, and I'm on the phone with my boss. And he delivers some shit news about a dumb decision that I, I, I just started crying. I'm on the phone with my boss. I'm crying. And I look down, Coca, and it's 344. And my heart stops because Lily Kate gets off the bus at 333. And albeit we live in a very safe area. Her bus stop is a half mile from our house. Yeah. And I, I ran out of the house, bawling, crying, running as fast as I could, because I could run faster than I could get my car there, running as fast as I could to get to Lily Kate, because, I mean, imagine an eight-year-old getting off the bus and standing there not knowing where her mommy is and what to do, and this, I don't, she doesn't have a cell phone. And so um, it was that day that, that I said, uh, Jilliqua cannot be more important than Jill the mom, Jill the wife, Jill the friend, Jill the daughter, Jill the sister. And I needed to, to really get my priorities in check so that I would never leave my daughter at the bus stop wondering 
why is Eloqua more important to my mommy than me? And and so it's you know I I I love Eloqua as if it's a person, and Eloqua is a business, and um, a great business. And I've had an amazing an amazing ten years building this this business, this space, this community of incredible marketers doing incredible things, um, but it's a business. And, you know, I, I want to be known for more than, than Jilliqua. I, I want to help. My, my purpose and my passion is to enrich other people's careers and to elevate the profession of both marketing and sales and and I'm using, I'm using my what you call celebrityhood to hopefully teach other people how to do, do this the better way and to leverage technology not to be creepy or to sell more shit, but it's to, to really make better connections and help people buy stuff that's going to help them be better not just helping people buy stuff, but helping people buy them stuff that's going to help them be better. And so how do companies, I mean, I guess you're facing this with Eloqua, but how should companies compensate salespeople that are being these voices? Uh, you know, and I think this is kind of, you know, goes back to the original problem of, you know, what's the big problem with social selling is that, as you pointed out, you know, sales reps that are very active, I mean, you're one of, you know, a few hundred sales reps. And what we're trying to figure out is, you know, if there was 100 Jills there, they'd be making, you know, they'd, I would think that Eloqua's voice would just be amplified, you know, beyond reproach. But because you're like the one main hub, you know, how do, how do companies start compensating the salespeople that have grown to this kind of stature? I think we're going to see a shift in compensation in both sales and marketing. So first, I think that the first shift that we need to see, given that marketing – is now managing 57% of the buying process, and why is sales getting all the money? So number one, marketing's compensation needs to change. And especially in companies where marketing is carrying a quota. It isn't, it, I, I, and I know we're running out of time, but when we first started selling the concept yeah, I, I, of- I've got all day. I mean, they might drop off, but uh, yeah. there's, there's <laughs> people that hang around. Well, well, then I'll, I'll do this. When we first started kept selling the concept of lead scoring at Eloqua, the marketers were like, shh, don't, no, shh, let's not talk about that. Let's not tell anybody else that that exists. And the reason it was, Coca, is because they were measured on the number of leads, not the quality, not the conversion, not the pipeline, and not the revenue. They were measured the volume. And so the yeah, scoring. So and I talked to old, you know, the traditional marketers that have been doing marketing for the last 10, 15 years or so. And I'm new yeah. in marketing. I mean, I came from a sales background. I, I'm in marketing because I work at Inside View and I know how to use social media. But that, is, that was expected, I mean, especially coming from a sales background. I was like, I need to hit a number. How many, converted, how many converted leads? How much revenue am I supposed to bring in from marketing? And the other people in marketing are like, nah, we don't really gauge that. I was like, what do you mean you don't gauge that? <laughs> how are you guys measured? And they're measured on clicks, opens, and impressions. And that's what, that is one of the fundamental things we are changing at Eloqua. We are giving marketing the ability to measure on a much more meaningful metric, and that's revenue. It's all about the I, – I don't care if I'm popular. Right? Like, clicks and likes. Oh, you do. Well, yeah, I do. <laughs> Let's be honest. You know, I want to be popular. But I want to be loved. I want to be loved. So I, I do think, though, that, that as we start to measure more interesting metrics and, and marketing becomes responsible for pipeline and revenue, we will have to see the shift. There's no reason why sales should get the big commission check and marketing get nothing. We, we will see a shift. Uh, I, will, I will evangelize it. Um, and then two, in terms of how do we restructure the comp for sales and how do we, you know, I think of social as another channel. And so you, you need to have, it, it's almost like a vertical, right? So people specialize in, 
in um, in banking. And so when the, the the great Tony Acosta joined the Eloqua Western Region, and he is our banking guy, and that wiped out every um, banking account on my list to Tony. That's okay. That that hey, that's a channel. That's specialization. So Tony gets all of the the banking accounts. That makes sense. He can speak the language of the bankers. So social is a channel. It's not as as maybe easy as as the banking example, but it isn't rocket surgery. Oh, I mean rocket science. Um, I was so going to call it, you on it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that it, it's a it's a little inside joke. Our chief revenue officer now, President Alex Schutman, that's that's his term. He says it isn't rocket surgery, and this isn't. It, it's change. It's massive change. It's transformation. But get on the change bus, or or become extinct. And and it's hard. We gotta we gotta create new tools for doing territory models. We need to create new comp plans. But hey. If that's the biggest problem we have, then 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 I'll take that problem. Well, that's amazing. And you know, as you said, we're we're coming up on our time. Uh, you know, Jill, this was a great a great interview with you. I think that uh, the fact that we had I think over a thirty percent uh, attendee rate versus what the registrations were, which is consistent. I mean, I wasn't really sure in the sense of a, uh, because this isn't a typical webinar for us where it's all thought leadership, I think this speaks to the fact that there is a high need and a, a desire to understand on a company level and an individual sales level how social selling and how social media plays a part within an organization. And, you know, we talk to that as an individual on a personal branding level and, you know, ending it off with where the companies need to start focusing and where this massive change needs to start taking place really is, you know, what we have to start seeing in, in the coming year. You know, and, you know, I, I hope you stay at Eloqua. If, if not, I'm sure that, you know, you're going to move on to bigger and better things. But, uh, you know, maybe we can do this again because I think that as this trans transformation takes place, things like Social Selling University and, you know, Jill Rowley are going to be kind of at the, at the focal point of what, you know, what the trend is going to end up becoming and thinking outside of the box of what we can do versus what's been working right now. Yeah, I, 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 um, I know no matter what, um, I will continue to evangelize um, social selling, and I will continue to um, share um, the reasons for doing it and, and the hows. Like, it's the, it's the why, it's the why, what, how, the why, how, what. Um, you have to start with the why. It's an inside-out view. So you start with the, the why, and, and the why for me is to have a platform to um, share information that I think is going to enrich other people's careers. So that, that for me, the why social is it's a big platform to share my wisdom, my knowledge around how to enrich other people's careers in both marketing and sales. The the the, the 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 how I do it is is I do it via TweetDeck, I do it via Hootsuite, I do it via LinkedIn, I do it via Google Plus, I do it via um, Twitter, um, and then the and then and, and then really it, it goes down to okay now what do I do? What do I do today? What do I do in a week? What do I do? You know, do I do it two hours a day? Do I do it all day? Do I keep the the window open? Do I retweet? Do I schedule my that, that's all that the technical aspect of execution, but but it really needs to start inside out of why you would do this and how you would do it and then what you would do, um, and and you'll you will not you will not stop hearing from me, Coca. 2013 is going to be an even bigger and better year for for what for for what I want to do. Well, Jill, again, thank you, and I'll uh, speak on behalf of all the attendees. You know, this was a great interview with you, and, you know, I appreciate your time. I know that you're a busy woman. Uh, so, you know, I will talk to you soon, and, and everyone that's on the webinar, uh, thank you very much for joining us today. And if you have any questions, I mean, connect with Jill on LinkedIn, you know, follow her on Twitter, uh, connect with us on, on LinkedIn and Twitter as well. So, hey, Coco, one thing. You, 
Yeah. Coco, yeah. one thing, I, I am open to all LinkedIn invite connections. Make it personal. Make, I, I heard you on the social selling interview today. I'd like to add you to my network. Let's connect. Do not send to anybody from this day forward. Make a vow to yourself to never send the, the, the generic invite. Make it about them. First, why? What about them do you want to, why? What about them do you want to connect with them about? Okay, so make it about them. Personalize the invite, and any personalized invite I receive, I will accept. Yeah, so don't send your invites to Jill through the mobile app because you can't personalize those yet. Oh, you're, hey, you know what, Coca? Let's let's log that as a feature request and get that voted up because that needs to change. I'm sure I've actually I'm Lincoln on the call. I, I'd like to put that into the free feature request because I, I've yeah. refused to actually use the mobile app to connect because of that exact issue. And and I and I'm guilty. I, I'm I'm guilty of that. So I, if you have received a non-personalized invite from me, it's because I've sent it from the mobile app. All right, Jill, All right, you have sorry. a great rest of the day. Congratulations on uh, the, the, you know, the news with the Oracle and Eloqua, and thank you for being on today's webinar. Thanks. Thanks so much. All right.